and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Stone Avenue. If you're coming from TikTok, welcome. If you just stumbled upon the video, welcome to you too. Now, we're going to be talking about the Champions League second leg, the all-important leg, the one that everyone is looking towards. And the truth about this is this, with the change and the slight change of the away goal rule, whereby the goals are the way they are, you can you can be drawing 2-2 two, two and nobody's looking at whether you scored away or you scored home, you know, you get to penalties or you get to extra time or whatever it, it, it requires. The, these matches are of utmost importance we're not right now. Now, we're going to get into the matches. When we look at Manchester City versus Sporting, that's not a match that we need to talk about, right? Man City took the first leg 5 nil. Second leg, they should even maybe score more, maybe score, make it 2-3-0 or whatever. Um, that's not something that I think we need to talk about. That match is done and, and dusted. Liverpool Inter Milan, um, I feel is done and dusted too, but because when you look at what um, Liverpool uh, did in Inter's house in San Siro, um, the fact that they beat AC Milan in the group stage, home and away, and the fact that they are playing Inter and they are beating them in, in San Siro too, I, I believe that that tie is over. There's no need to talk about it. So two ties gone. Uh, the Man City versus Sporting, and of course the Liverpool versus. Inter Milan gone out of the way. Now let's get into very very interesting stuff, which is Atletico Madrid versus Manchester United. The truth about this is this: the Atletico team is in shambles when we look at the, the defensive side, based on what they are playing in La Liga. Um, Jimenez and all those guys at the back. Sometimes they bring Condobia to play as a centre back, uh, pairing uh, 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 Jimenez. But the truth about this is this: it's not working. Uh, at the Atletico, if you look at the Atletico defense, the one time that Manchester United attacked them. They scored. The truth about this is that if Man U should attack Atletico Madrid, they are going to score. Atletico Madrid's defense is not good. So also is Manchester United's defense. They have Harry Maguire for God's sake. Harry Maguire has been a constant pain to fans throughout the entire season. In fact, I don't understand how he still starts. He shouldn't be on the bench. He should be sent to the B team. He should be sold. He should be loaned. Not. He shouldn't be in the team. But somehow. You're going to see maybe the fact that he's still going to start based on the fact that you're saying he's the captain, all of that. So you're going to have a Man defense defense that that's porous and Suarez might be back and you have, of course, you have Jair Felix and all of that. And the Atletico Madrid defense that is porous. Manchester United also have a problem of retaining possession. And Atletico Madrid are very direct in the attack. So this is going to be a game whereby I believe that the goalkeepers are going to step up to the plate. It's going to, it's going to, the game is going to be determined based on the goalkeepers because both defenses are porous. But the truth about this is this, I just see Mayu edging this because of Cristiano Ronaldo and his history with Atletico Madrid. I don't think Atletico are going to remove Manchester United. Um, it's just a lot at stake for Ronaldo at this point, uh, at this point, based on the Champions League, qualifying for the World Cup and all of that. I believe that it's in the state of mind right now that he's going to remove Atletico Madrid, even if he has to do it single-handedly. That, that's how I see it. Now, PSG versus Real Madrid. This is a match where a lot of people have looked at and said, oh, you know, they are going to Santiago Bernabeu, Madrid, 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 a la Madrid, a la la Madrid, all, of, all of that. But I believe that with or without Mbappe, that PSG is going to remove Real Madrid. The truth about this is this, we have not seen the, the, the killer side of Lionel Messi, but, but, but he has that side. And I believe that this match is going to show it if Mbappe doesn't play. But when Mbappe plays, Messi is going to be the orchestrator, orchestrating everything. Neymar and Mbappe are going to do their work and get the goals. Um, Kamavinga, do not do not belittle Real Madrid because you know people say, oh Tony Cruz is out, but they have Kamavinga, they have Valverde, and they still have Luka Modric. Look how Luka Modric did last match without go outside the box, and Kamavinga the goal is scored. But the truth about this is this: I don't I don't see I don't see Madrid moving PSG because when you look at the context of the game and how they played, you can see that the PSG team just the, the defense and midfield you just think they tame the Madrid attack. I don't I don't see Vinicius doing much against Akimi, and if PSG just play how they played, you know, hold the possession, allow Verratti to do his work, allow Messi to do what he's supposed to do, be an orchestrator and all of that. But if Mbappe is not in the game, then Messi has to bring out the killer instead, score the hat, score the two goals and deliver what is necessary to move them to the next level. It's as simple as that. Now, let's get into other things. Chelsea, Lille, I believe that match is over. The, the, the tie is over. 2-0 against Lille first leg. Uh, second leg, I don't see Lille winning. Of course, Chelsea are the best goalkeeper in the world. That's going to be a straightforward thing. Now, the match that is very, really, really tight is Benfica Ajax and Villarreal versus Juventus. Big, uh, of course, Salzburg, Salzburg versus uh, Bayern. I, I don't see, I don't see Salzburg qualifying. I mean, <laughs> I mean, first leg maybe Bayern was just, was just resting. You know, there was, a, there was a match during the group stage where Bayern 
they were, they were drawing to like 78 minutes and after that Bayern scored about three four goals you know the Bayern team can score at any time so as much as South Bay was able to hold them and all of that you know going going back to the Islands Arena you know I just see destruction on the way <laughs> I don't see South Bay winning this match but like if you look at the way the way the, the thing can unfold like Bayern can just score three in, in 10 minutes like that that's how that's how they play that's that's who they are that's their identity so um if South Bay are going to win the match it's going to have to they have to play exactly how they played the last time they have to be on their toes marking running nobody can stand everybody has to be running on their toes every throughout the entire 90 minutes if they're going to have any chance it's never of hope in this in this in this time but when you look at Villarreal versus Juventus, that's the match that's going to be very tricky because Juventus will take take the draw in Villarreal's house. We are going back to, to Juventus and all of that. And then when you look at the fact that the Juventus team are, are on an unbeaten streak um, they're, they're in in the league and all of that, and the fact that they have they have almost revitalized their season in top four uh, of, of the Serie A from almost relegation zone and back to top four and all of that, Juventus have all the ammunition. But if you look at that first leg, there is something that's a telling factor. Juventus sat back after scoring one goal and Villarreal pressed them. Villarreal could have scored two, three, four goals, but they missed a lot of chances and all of that. Now, I believe that this game is going to be the same thing. Attacking by, by Villarreal, defensive and counter, contain and counter by Juventus. But at the end of the day, I want to see Villarreal in the next round, right? <laughs> I want to see Villarreal in the next round just because of the style of play they, 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 they employ, uh, the attacking play, the way they play very fluidly, the way they're they are happy, they're excited playing and all of that. I just want to see Villarreal. That's a personal choice, but, but it's going to be a very, very difficult game based on the fact that Juventus is going to defend and counter and Villarreal is going to play on the attack and everything. Then down to the game that was, to me, one of the most interesting games of, of, of the first round, which was Benfica versus Ajax. That game was on steroids. That game was on another level. And what we are looking at here is a team that, two teams that are attacking, they, are, they, are, they know how to attack. One team knows how to defend more than the other team and, and all of that. Um, uh, Benfica is the better defensive team than Ajax. And um, you, you could see that in the goals that Benfica scored Ajax. But the truth about this is this. If anybody's going to win, Mistakes can't happen. Sebastian Hala can't do what he did in the first leg. All those things need to be sorted out. But at the end of the day, this is what I feel. I feel like going to the quarterfinals, I'm going to see Manchester United. I'm going to see PSG. I'm going to see Bayern. I feel like I'm going to see Liverpool. I feel like I'm going to see Chelsea. I feel like in, in the second, in the next round, I'm going to see Villarreal. I feel like um, next round, I'm going to see Man City. And I just feel like in the next round, I, I, I'm, I'm going to see I'm going to see Benfica. <laughs> Just because they beat my team Barcelona, right? Just because they beat my team, like, that's that's what I feel. Like. That's what I feel. I'm going to see. But I don't know. The let's see what happens. Um, and then uh, we we'll get ourselves into this. Thank you again. Subscribe to the channel. Until next time. Bye for now. Peace out.